Thank you. Thank you very much. How are you? Please be seated. Good evening. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to this lovely theater here in downtown Montreal. Um, it's unbelievable. Can't understand you. Female voice does not travel well. I don't know what it is. Up close or in a whisper can make you dick hard, but beyond 10 feet, it just sounds like a couple of birds fly, you know, <laughs> fighting over a french fry or something, you know? There you go. That's how we start. Nobody's coming out of the gate. I'm, uh, I'm sick of Obama's wife. Yeah, just running a, this isn't some Democrat Republican shit. This is just in general. Just running her yap. It's just like, shut up. You know, you weren't elected. You know, your husband isn't running a lemonade stand. He's running the country. No, generally speaking, first ladies, they've been out of line for a good 25, 30 years. They think for some reason that their husband has the job that now they should be chiming in like they know some shit, you know? Dude, if you had a leak at your house and you called the plumber and the plumber comes in and he starts fixing it, what would you do if five seconds later his wife, who isn't a plumber, comes walking in, well, I think we should run it over here. It's like, shut up. Just because you're fucking the plumber doesn't mean you understand plumbing. Okay? No, oh, this is all like my fears because they're trying to tell us down uh, south here that like they're, they're starting to like gear up for Hillary Clinton to be running for president, saying like, I think that would be a good thing. Yeah, people clapping. What, what is that based on? Based on what? I don't get how she became a senator. That's shocking to you? She went from never holding political office to immediately being a senator. Why, because she was fucking the president? Should Tom Brady's wife be the next quarterback of the Rams? <laughs> Did, does he have some sort of magical powers? Like you suck at sports? I couldn't throw it all, and then he fucked me, and I just picked up this ball, and I was just, I was just lacing it in there. It was incredible. <laughs> Dude, it all started, it all started with Nancy Reagan. That's where it first went off the rails, you know? She came out with her little bird body, you know, just <laughs> her big head. Just came walking out, say no to drugs, and people off your heroin, say no to that. Mm, she just walked back. <laughs> Hillary had her stupid health care plan. Obama's wife's running a yap on 60 Minutes, you know? I gotta give it up to the Bushes. They had their women in line. I did. Barbara never said shit. She smiled every once in a while. She threw something in there. George W's wife, I don't even know her name. <laughs> Stu was in office for eight years. I don't even know her fucking name. What's it like, Beth or Paige or something like that? He had her on lockdown. Going out there tonight, I'm giving a speech. And when I say something and they laugh, you're gonna nod. You're gonna smile and you're, you're gonna nod that head. Is this how it's gonna be, really? Do you think like me saying this is somehow gonna affect, she's still gonna win? <laughs> Listen, let me ask you this question. Do you think that a woman being president is gonna affect anything? Do you? Oh, do you? What, what are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? What's she gonna, what the fuck is she gonna do? Do you know what the president makes? The president makes 400 grand a year. That's it. He's supposed to keep bankers in line that get like $100 million bonuses. I'll tell you, if you really want, nothing's gonna change, okay? Black, white, dick, or clam. It, it doesn't make a bit of difference. Nothing is gonna change until somebody's got the balls to start a group, go over the wall of one of these gated communities, and you start, you start slitting some throats. <laughs> Not just random throats, the right throats. You gotta climb up a tree, be up there with your scope, knowing that in 11 fucking minutes, your life is gonna end, right? And take out many, many of those people as you can. 
Yeah, other than that, it's just gonna be a pair of tits saying the same shit to you. I'm staying in a hotel, everybody. <laughs> I like staying in hotels. They make me feel comfortable. I feel safe in a hotel. You know, you got the lobby. There's always somebody down there in case an ax murderer comes in. That's the first person that's gonna get killed. You can hear their screaming when you're up in your room. Gives you a chance to plan. Barricade the door, you know, turn on the shower, hide in between the mattresses, right? <laughs> Little misdirection. Back in the day, I used to stay in, uh, I used to stay in motels. I hated staying in motels. Could never feel safe. You basically, you were lying in a bed two feet from a door that just opened up out into a parking lot. Anybody in the world could just come walking up, kick the door open, ah, you motherfucker, just drag you out of the bed. <laughs> and you're just lying in that bed, so not ready to have a fight to the death. <laughs> Sitting there half naked, like nodding off. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Meanwhile, there's some guy on the other side of the door with a chainsaw, like blah, 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 blah. You're lying there like, oh, it's kind of early to be trimming the hedges. Blah, blah, blah. But when that dude comes through that door, you lie to yourself as a man that if something like that happened, dude, I just jump up, grab a lamp, let's fucking do this. <laughs> you know what the reality is? Most people, the best you could do is maybe make a weird noise. Just be like, <laughs> and that would be it. That would be it. That dude would just come in. <laughs> the last thing you'd see is just ceiling carpet, ceiling carpet, ceiling carpet, ceiling carpet, ceiling carpet. <laughs> Look at upside down back at your own body, right? <laughs> I will say this. What I do enjoy about this theater is nobody has told me it's haunted. Anytime you go into a theater, they always give you the history. It was built 1948. It was a tribute to Rocket Richard. Everybody chipped in, blah, 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 blah. And we have a ghost. His name is Michael. <laughs> I immediately lose all respect for anybody over the age of eight that still believes in ghosts. It's like, really? You still believe in specters and goblins? What is the end game of being a ghost? I don't get it. You can go anywhere you want to go in the world. You're just going to stay in a basement for the rest of your life? <laughs> just waiting for once every six months, somebody comes down to check the boiler, and you get to be like, <laughs> Why wouldn't you go somewhere? Dude, I'd fly right to Washington, D.C., fly right into the CIA building, just start sitting in on meetings, like, these guys are out of their fucking minds. <laughs> fly to the Super Bowl, go right into the huddle. I always wondered what they talked about. <laughs> I'm not gonna spend the rest of my life in an attic, <laughs> trying to scare some accountant into solving my murder.